Hi grade 8s, it's Mrs Nguane here. I hope that you're all doing well and that you and your families are healthy. I have just uploaded some slides onto the school website and I suggest that you either print them out and have them with you as you watch this video or you could just read through them before watching the video. Previously in the slides we discussed what a map is and the scale and I quickly just want to touch on scale again before we go into distance and direction. In this map of South Africa, you can see that the distance between Johannesburg and Durban on this slide, if we measured it with our ruler, that little red line, it would only be a few centimeters long. But we know that in real life, the distance between Johannesburg and Durban is about 560 kilometers. So remember, maps have been reduced a certain amount of times so that they can fit onto a piece of paper. So if we got a map and we wanted to work out the distance between Johannesburg and Durban, or say for example, Johannesburg and the Kruger National Park, we would have to do a certain calculation to try and work out what is that distance in real life. Because if we just measured it with our ruler, we know that it's not only a few centimeters to get to the Kruger National Park. So to get that formula that I was talking about, we need to look at the scale of the map and usually we work with a 1 to 50,000 scale and remember that means that one centimeter on the map represents 50,000 centimeters in real life so if you took a 1 to 50,000 map and you took your ruler and you put one centimeter anywhere on the map that one centimeter on the map that you're measuring with your ruler would be the same as 50,000 centimeters in real life or in reality. But say, for example, we wanted to measure something or measure the distance on the map from one point to another. And that distance on the map was, let's say, 10 centimeters. Then in real life, that would mean it would be 10 centimeters times 50,000. And 50,000 is a very big number for us to use. And also we don't use centimeters when we're giving directions for example so if I told you if I was trying to give you directions from the school to a shop I wouldn't say to you walk down the street for 50,000 centimeters turn right and then for about 100,000 centimeters you'll carry on going straight and then turn left at the robot we don't use centimeters in that way so in order to work out the distance in real life we need a formula that will be useful for us one that will give us the answer in kilometers. So we know that one centimeter, sorry, one meter is the same as a hundred centimeters. So that means that one centimeter on the map will also represent 500 meters because we could divide this 50,000 centimeters by 100 to give us 500 meters. Meters is also a good. Um, unit to work with we can say that we'd go down the road 500 meters but kilometers is a lot better especially when we're working with a map with such a small scale remember we said small scales have bigger numbers 1 to 50,000 the area that the map is covering is so big that we would rather use kilometers than meters so in order to get to kilometers we know that 1,000 meters is the same as one kilometer and that means that if we look at this 500 meters we know that 500 meters is half of a thousand right so that means that one centimeter on the map would represent 0 0,5 kilometers or half a kilometer so that is where we get our formula for distance. When we say something centimeters times 0, 0,5 gives us something kilometers. This formula is something that you'll need for the rest of your high school career. So if you take geography up until matric, you'll be using it even then in your final exams. So this formula is very, very important. It's one that you need to know off by heart. So the formula is something centimeters times 0, 
equals something kilometers. Okay, so when you are working with this formula, it might look easy because you'll probably have a calculator in your test. But if you forget your calculator and you're not sure, um, remember I said that if we had used centimeters still, we would have to times by 50,000 and that's a lot. So that's why we're using an easier way to get to kilometers. So, for example, if I, on a map, we measured from point A to B and it was 10 centimeters that we measured with our ruler. We'll take that 10 centimeters and put it into the formula. So we have 10 centimeters times 0, 0,5 equals something kilometers. And like I said, it might look easy because we can just put it in our calculator and do the sum. But if you don't have your calculator and... It's actually super simple if um, you think about it in a different way. We know that 0, 0,5 is half, which means that we can just say in our heads, what is half of 10? And it will give us the answer, 5 kilometers. So we could do this with any numbers. If we had 20 centimeters or uh, let's say 14 centimeters, we could say something centimeters times 0, 0,5 gives us something kilometers and if we put in the 20 centimeters there we can say 20 times 0 0.5 or we can just say half of 20 is 10 kilometers if we use the 14 centimeters we times it by 0 0.5 and it will give us half of 14 is 7 and it gives us 7 kilometers in real life so these numbers here the ones that we're using for centimeters, those ones are the distance that we measure on the map. These ones here at the end, the kilometers, is the distance in real life. I'm going to show you an example of working out the distance from an actual map. So here I've printed out a topographic map. That's a map that you will use in grade 9 and if you take geography and some trick. It's a 1 to 50,000 map. These are the maps that we would usually use when we are working with maps in geography. So in the previous slides from last week, I put up some slides on what are maps, the map key, and all of that stuff. So you might notice some things on this map. There are some little rows of trees, other little green circles, the little black uh, squares or rectangles are buildings, we can see um, some roads, the red lines and white lines. Those would all be in the map key that I put in the slides from last week. So when we're trying to work out the distance on a map, for example, I've just circled them in um, pencil. Say, for example, I wanted to work out the distance from this little building here to this rectangular building there. I take my ruler. I will measure from this little building here and see that it stops at seven centimeters. You might want to use the millimeters part of your ruler because sometimes the building, for example, if we wanted to measure to this building here, it wouldn't exactly be a whole number like seven or eight. Here we can see that it's 7.4 centimeters. So that's a good idea to rather measure with the millimeters part, but for now I'm just doing an easy example using only centimeters. So here we've measured and we get seven centimeters. So now we take our measurement that we measured on the map and we use our formula. So remember our formula is something centimeters times 0, 0,5 gives us something kilometers. And remember, we want our answer in kilometers because we don't use centimeters. If we used centimeters, we would get thousands of centimeters as our answer and we wouldn't use that in real life. So we put our answer that we measured on the map. So we got 7 centimeters. We measured with our ruler. We times it by 0, 0,5 and it gives us something kilometers. If you don't have a calculator or you don't know how to work out times 0, 0,5 in your head, all we have to do is we know that 0, 0,5 is half. So what we're saying to get to kilometers is what is half of seven? And we know that the answer is 3,5 
kilometers or in your head you could just say seven divided by two because we know that divide by two means half and that is how we work out kilometers so this seven centimeters here is what we measured on the map this 3,5 kilometers is what we measure or what the distance would be in real life. So if we traveled from this small building to this little building, even though we measured seven centimeters on the map, that distance in real life, if you walked from that place to that place, it would be 3,5 kilometers. The next thing that we're going to go into is direction. You know, basic direction north south east and west um, but you need to know the 16 cardinal points and those are on the slides that i have put up please go and look at those before you watch this part of the video direction is a very useful thing that we use in our everyday life obviously now with gps and that kind of thing it makes it a lot easier but it's still good to know direction and i'm going to show you the importance of from and to when it comes to direction because that is where us sneaky teachers can trick you in the first example we're going to say give the direction from a to b and in the second example we're going to do give the direction from b to a and i'm going to show you why it's so important to look at those two words from and to so how we work our direction we're going to work on this example first we're going to look at where is the from point and where is the to point. And the from point is the one that we are going to be working from. But before we do anything, we need to join our two points. So for example, on a map, A could be a school and B could be a police station or something like that. So we've joined our points A and B. We are working from A. So what we need to do is we draw a north-south line through that point, the from point. And we're gonna mark it north and south. Then we're going to draw a east-west line through the from point and we're going to label it west and east remember there's lots of ways that you can remember the different cardinal points never eat silkworms i'm sure that there are some that you've heard of before so the next thing that we're going to do is draw the other cardinal points that are close to our line here so we know that in between south and east is southeast so i'm just gonna draw that one in obviously with direction it's not perfect unless you're using a protractor but we are just kind of finding the in between between south and east and then the other point that is close by is east southeast like i said you need to know the points before being able to do direction somewhere in the middle there and we're going to label those ones this one is southeast this one is uh sorry east southeast okay so now we can see that our our line that we are looking at from a to b is closest to southeast so that will be our answer You can just write it in letters you don't have to write out the full words but it looks simple because our answer is just two letters but it's very important that we use this method to work out the direction so now we've seen how to work out from a to b but now i'm going to show you how why it's so important to look for those words from and to so when we are looking at the direction from b to A, our north oh, sorry, our north south line is going to be going through B now, not A. Oh, sorry, before we do it, remember we join our two places. 
usually you would use pencil on a map, um, especially if it's a map that's reused. If it's just in a cycle test or something and it's printed on your paper, then obviously you can do whatever you want on it. So we're going to draw our north-south line through B because that is the from point. We're going to label it north and south. We're going to draw our east-west line through the from point, which is B now. And label it and now we're going to draw the lines that are closest to our a B line that we are trying to find the di direction between so the first one that's close by is our northwest line and somewhere in between there is west northwest okay and now you can see that the direction from b to a is closest to northwest so our answer will be northwest I hope you found this video helpful and please remember that you can email me if you have any other questions. I know that it might be a stressful time for some of you. Some of you might just be feeling very overwhelmed with all the work that you're getting. Some of you might really be enjoying being at home with your family, but just remember to take it one day at a time. You are all awesome and we miss you and we can't wait to be back at school with you.